We have a snake-like filament that rips off the sun, some solar storming from some fast solar wind, and a new sunspot emerges in Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is getting very exciting. Not only are we dealing with a solar storm right now that has brought us up to active conditions and brought some aurora clear down to mid-latitudes, but the storm isn't over. This is due to some fast solar wind from a big coronal hole, and the largest finger of that coronal hole has not rotated into the Earth's strike zone yet, but it's just about to. And this means we could bump us up to storm levels and bring us even more aurora, maybe even more intense aurora that we've already seen. But believe it or not, this is not the only story. As we take a look at the front-sided uh, sun, you can look in the eastern limb up on the north. There is a gorgeous filament. This is that filament bridge I was telling you about over the past week or so. Look at that. It finally erupts in a gorgeous display and it's created a solar storm, but it is not Earth-directed. It's actually moving towards stereo, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But that's not the only story either. We also have region 2776 that's rotating off of the sun's west limb, but we have two new regions, including a new sunspot region that's going to be labeled 2778 here in the southern hemisphere. We have a bright region in the northern hemisphere. Both of those are showing signs of activity, so we could be getting some small uh, flares from that and a little bit of noise on the radio bands. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, get ready for that. That's going to add to the already kind of disturbed conditions we have due to this solar storm. So sorry that propagation especially on Earth's night side, is not all that great right now. And now it looks like maybe on the day side you're going to get a little sizzle as well. So you're going to have to deal with that. Now as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see that in the northern hemisphere, that big long filament, and you can also see how far it extends. As a matter of fact, as we switch to 304 angstroms, this is the red sun. Sorry, the images don't look all that good, but that's beacon images. These are the real-time images that we get. Better quality images come later, but in real time, it's good enough to see. Look at this massive filament as it launches off the sun. Oh my goodness, it's almost the entire extent of the sun in stereo's view. This is a big filament. It's the biggest one we've seen launch in solar cycle 25, and it is definitely uh, indicating what is to come as this cycle continues to ramp up. Now, meanwhile, back on the green sun, you can see the bright region in the southern hemisphere. This may be region 2775 as it's beginning to rotate back into stereo's view. It is still launching solar storms on the sun's far side, so we just have a ton of activity to watch, and it looks like solar storms are definitely ramping up, which is good news for aurora uh, uh, photographers, and the bright regions are going to continue to increase that solar flux, so it looks like Solar Cycle 25 is continuing to give us some good news. Switching to our chronographs, now this is a chronograph from Stereo's view, and you can see back on the 22nd and the 23rd, look at those solar storm eruptions. This is the activity I was talking about that might be from old region 2775, but we're just going to have to wait a few more days to see this region rotate back into Stereo's view to know for sure. But then look on the 24th, do you see this big ring around the sun? That is a halo eruption. This is that big filament eruption. We can definitely tell because it's a halo, it's headed towards stereo, so it's not Earth-directed. But it's sure nice to see these big halos again because that means solar storms that could hit Earth are definitely on the rise. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model. We're looking down at the sun from the North Pole and Earth is off to the right. And you can see that solar storm launch. It is definitely east of Earth. It's not Earth directed at all. And it doesn't even look like we're going to get any wake from this solar storm. So don't worry. I mean, it's not going to be any worse than just having that fast solar wind hit us already. Yet it is a direct hit for stereo. So we're going to be paying very close attention to how intense it is at stereo space spacecraft because it gives us an idea of how strong these storms are getting as solar cycle 25 begins to really ramp up.
Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with the full moon being on the 31st. It's going to be Halloween. How lucky is that? It's my favorite day of the year. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, or I don't know, maybe some ghouls and goblins, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So you're going to have to be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that solar storm from that fast solar wind, from that northern coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And over the next couple days, the deepest finger of that coronal hole is going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, so the storming isn't over yet. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 65% chance of a major storm, and that should happen right about the 26th. At mid-latitudes, we're expecting active conditions Conditions, but we do have a 25 to 30 percent chance of minor storm conditions. So even at mid-latitudes, there's going to be a decent chance to catch some aurora. We've already been seeing aurora, and more is possible. So your war photographers enjoy this nice sweep because it, things will take you know at least a few more days before things begin to calm down, and you can get some good shots in there. And for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know there's been a few contests here lately, and it's causing issues for radio prop. So just hang in there because things will settle down here in about a week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have multiple bright regions in Earth view, including old region 2776 that's going to be rotating off of the sun's west limb, and new region 2778. Now the nice thing though is that they're not really all that flare active, we're only worried about C-class flares, so everything is in the green when it comes to big M-class flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts this week, so that should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. You don't have to worry about your GPS reception all that much, at least on Earth's day side. Of course, those solar storms aren't helping all that much on Earth's night side, but that's a different story. Now, also, we have a solar flux that's going to stay in the low 70s, possibly rise up into the mid 70s um, by the end of the week. We'll, we'll see. It depends upon how these regions continue to evolve. But that does mean marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. And this will continue easily throughout this week. So once the solar storms kind of die down a little bit, radio propagation should be reasonably good and it will continue to stay that way. Now also because we are still trying to climb out of solar minimum, I know the sun is acting but it's still kind of in solar minimum thus far. Uh, we have a bigger cosmic ray flux than we normally would, so this means that you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. We're already in a solar storm right now that's bumped us up to active conditions and brought aurora down to mid-latitudes, and we're in store for more. That northern coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, it has that finger-like extension that's really going to be giving us a nice boost here over the next couple days, and that could bump us up to storm levels. So your war photographers, Definitely keep your batteries charged and get out there because you could definitely get some decent shots, especially at high latitudes. Now, we also had that gorgeous filament erupt, and sadly, it is not Earth-directed, but it's going to pass over stereo, so we're going to get a good idea of how strong that storm would have been had it hit Earth. So, Aurora photographers, you know, we missed out this time, but hey, you're already getting a solar storm, so you can't be too bad, right? Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we just had another bright region emerge on the Earth-facing disk, and this one is going to be labeled 2778 if NOAA hasn't done it already. And that should be continue to boost that solar flux into the mid-70s, low to mid-70s over this next week. So as that solar storm calms down, you should be able to enjoy some marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And now for you GPS users, well, you know, solar storms aren't all that fun, right? You got to deal with the uh, bad, pro ba uh, uh, bad GPS reception on Earth's night side anywhere near a Aurora, and it also makes it a little bit tough near dawn and dusk. So as long as you stay away from those regions over the next couple days, your GPS should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.